Hawthorne, 93 7. Hey, Cam. Uh, just wondering the impact of not having Minka on Sunday and how that's really going to affect what you guys can do defensively. Uh, I don't know. You know, I think, you know, we're going to have to have guys step up. Not exactly sure who, but, uh, you know, that's why you got a 53 man roster. Uh, you know, there's going to be injuries. There's going to be times where, uh, you're not at 100 on defense or offense, and you know we just gotta make sure to, uh, we're able to. Uh, you know, D line has to step up a bunch. Uh, inside linebackers, corners, uh, we all have to do our part to make sure we minimize uh, the role of making that play. Chris Carter, uh, locked on. Hey Cam. Um, saw earlier in the week you uh, you responded to Warren Sapp's tweet. Was there was there any relationship between you guys that was like, you know, that was an inside joke, or was that just out of nowhere and you were like, okay, that's that's weird. No relationship. Brian back of Post Gazette. I'm gonna follow up on that for Chris. Um, I mean. Are you amazed at all by that at this point, Cam? I mean, I know Warren's been critical of the Steelers in the past, even when you were a young guy in the league. I mean, what what do you make of that? Is that just a case of uh, you kind of being under the radar a little bit still to some people? I'm not going to put words in his mouth. He said what he said. Um, I'll be ready on Sunday. Tip Ben, DVE. Hey, Cam, um, just kind of curious. I know that a lot of attention has been paid to the rush defense, uh, especially in the wake of the Lions game. But uh, from a pass defense perspective, starting with Herbert, you guys are seeing, I think it's uh, six of the top 12 quarterbacks over the last eight weeks here of the NFL season. Um, how do you feel your pass rush is and how do you feel the guys are who are filling some of the voids? Like, you know, for instance, TJ being out and if Joe can't play, if Mika can't play, how are you feeling about the depth guys to help against the pass? Good about it. You know, I think um, we have guys that uh, have played already and we need them to step up um, and they're going to need to step up again this week. Um, you know, I know we got a, a, a long list of good quarterbacks we're going to play, but, you know, you got to beat the best. And, you know, we say we want to go to the playoffs. Um, what better way to do that is to make a statement with the way we play against these guys. Mark Pryor, ESPN. Hey, Cam, I know Ben is obviously on the other side of the ball, but what do you guys miss when you don't have him around during the week from a leadership perspective? And is there even more pressure on the defensive side of the ball, knowing that the offense is working with uh, backup quarterback and having to do some different things than they would normally be able to do with Ben? You know, I think Ben provides a lot of experience for guys. Um, you know, Mason has played for us before, but, you know, Ben's seen a lot of things um, and he's learned from it and he understands uh, every situation you put them in, um, you know, on a, as a defense, we can't put them in, you know, tough situations. I think um, with younger quarterbacks and quarterbacks that, uh, you know, we're not accustomed to, we have to give them short fields. Um, you know, last time we played the Chargers, uh, we had to go there and we had duck. And the main thing for us was providing those short fields. So I think we got to do a great job of doing that again today. I mean, you know, on Sunday. So uh, it should be a fun contest. John Lillick, WICU. Hey there, Cam. Looking back at Sunday's performance, I, I know at different points this year, the tackling has been something that's brought up. Is it schematic? Is it something that you guys technique-wise need to improve? Where, do you, where, after reviewing the tape, do you think you guys can improve going down the stretch front of the season? You know, not dropping our heads, uh, running through tackles, um, taking better angles, uh, running to the ball. You know, if there's missed tackles, it's going to happen, but to have 10 or 11 guys to the ball, uh, you know, helps, you know, nullify that. Um, you know, I think uh, you can say it's an X's and O's thing, but when we don't execute and we don't play the way we're supposed to and use our hands and get off blocks, uh, then that's a recipe for, the, you know, a rough game. Brian Batco, Cam, how much are you looking forward to facing uh, Matt Filer Sunday night, a guy that you know pretty well, and uh, he seems to be doing pretty well for them out in uh, L.A. I think he's playing left guard, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, the anchor is, you know, everybody calls him the anchor here, but, uh, you know, he he's playing really stout right now. 
Um, you know, I would say he's he's one of their top O linemen over there. And man, I was really sad to see him go because I, I thought he provided a lot of uh, stability in our O line in years past and didn't get the credit he deserved. Uh, but you know, I'm looking forward to the challenge. Uh, you want to play against good competition, and you know, he's he's right up there with him. Chris Carter. Sam, you've played a lot next to Isaiah Bugs this year, him filling in for, you know, Tyson and everything. What have you seen out of his growth as a player? And what are the things that you make? Are there things you say to him throughout the week to kind of push him because you guys need him to to keep improving each week? Yeah, you know, I think for Bugs, um, you know, some of it comes with just experience. Um, but, you know, I think, you know, he came from a, a great pro- program in Alabama. And I think the thing for him, he's got to continue to just be consistent. Um, you know, you can't just be one great play and then you fall off from there. Uh, continue to use your hands. Um, you know, a lot a lot of times guys want to, you know, play quick and try to reach them, but he's got to be, uh, you know, he's got to be strong and he's got to get his hands on them and he's got to push people back. Uh, you know, we need him to be stout in that inside role because um, if you don't have a good nose tackle in there, you're going to get beat. So, you know, he, he's going, um, you know, I think, him and Henry Mondu have done a really good job of, you know, really trying to settle down in the position. Last two, Tim, ben, or last three, I guess, Tim Benz, DB. Yeah, and this is a, sort of a big picture question, but, you know, big story in Pittsburgh this week is uh, the sale of the Penguins. Um, the new group is selling to Fenway Sports Group. I'm wondering what it's been like for you during your time in Pittsburgh. Uh, to deal with ownership, you know, I've done it from a player's rep standpoint. What does ownership mean to you as a player in the NFL? And what's it been like having the Roonies as owners for your entire career? Yeah, I was kind of shocked by the whole thing, um, you know, with uh, Penguins being, you know, potentially bought out by, uh, you know, the Fenway group. I was like, man, uh, I want I want a, a Pittsburgh-based story, you know, someone outside of Boston, you know, I know we don't play Boston too often, but, you know, there's some bad blood there. Uh, so, you know, I, w- I wish, uh, you know, I got a chance to get in on that deal or something. We need more uh, Pittsburgh people in that. But, uh, you know, uh, it, it, I guess you can't really say from my perspective because, like, you know, the Roonies have always owned <laughs> the Steelers and, like, we've never had to worry about anything like that. So, um, you know, we'll see. <laughs> Mark Cavalli, The Athletic. Hey, Cam, um, what has jumped out at you from uh, Trey Norwood? We're talking about late round pick here, um, and he's been moving around positions a lot. I mean, what has jumped out to you about him to be able to be successful and be so young in this defense? You know, it's funny. When he got drafted, Coach called him the Swiss Army knife, um, and he has been that for us. Um, you know, every time I see him, I'm always like tighten up Trey. And I feel like we get out there every time uh, he's tightened up and, you know, he knows where he needs to be. Um, he's a, he's a young kid that's always on the move and always on the rise. And, um, you know, I, I just think he does so much for this team. Um, you know, a lot of stuff under the radar that I think uh, he's going to be a valuable piece uh, of the equation down the road. And last one, Chris Adamski, true. You guys, how many Steeler fans do you expect to be there? And and especially in LA or those, some of those West Coast places where it's always terrible towels, what, would you expect it to be like a home game again? I don't know. You know, I, I think if everybody's trying to avoid the weather we got right now, they're headed out to LA. Um, and I think uh, last time we went there, they played Renegade on accident and, you know, it got a little, a little crazy there. So I don't think they'll do that this time. <laughs> 